Okay, boys and girls. We're going to be reading a story, an informational text called the U.S. Constitution. So when you read informational text, and we're going to be reading an informational text called the U.S. Constitution, I want you to know that when you read informational text, you synthesize new information. And you synthesize that with what you already know about a topic. As a result, you develop new understanding of that topic. So you take what you know and you combine it with the new information that you're receiving from what you're reading. So good readers make connections with what you read by combining it and thinking about your own experiences and ideas and other texts. We read some information yesterday. So you're gonna take what you read yesterday and you're gonna combine it with what you're reading today. And maybe other information that you've read other days or maybe things that you've seen on TV. And you're gonna combine that all together to form an understanding of what you're reading with our new, new topic or new selection that we're reading. Now, let's look at what we see. It says synthesize. When you synthesize, your thinking changes and you form new ideas. You say, you take what you know. And at first I was thinking, whatever you were thinking, because, and then you take what I'm learning. So when I was reading, I was thinking whatever because whatever you were reading, and now you have a new understanding. And by the end, this is what you are thinking because of your new information. So you put it all together and you develop new understanding because you're taking all this information and you're sifting and sorting it in your mind. So you're developing new ideas, you're putting it all together, and you could take that information and so you can come up with a new understanding of a topic because you're gathering all this information. You're sorting it out, you're putting it together, you're finding new bits and parts of information, and that makes your reading more um, comprehensive, I guess. So you can monitor your reading by asking yourself questions such as, what did I already know about a topic? Who already knows information about the U.S. Constitution? So some of you already know some information. After you're done reading, you think, what am I beginning to think about it? Now what do I understand? What is my new thinking? So you could think about, well, now what am I understanding about the U.S. Constitution? Has my thinking changed? Do I have a new understanding of it? Which you probably will have a new understanding of it after you read this new topic. So you're gonna practice synthesizing with the U.S. Constitution. So let's start. We're going to be on page 230 of the U.S. Constitution. So everybody, let's turn to page 230. And so here's our genre focus. Informational text. Informational text give facts and examples about a topic. Informational texts often include headings and subheadings to signal what comes next. Informational texts include central ideas supported by key details and facts. Central ideas are the same thing as main ideas, so central or main ideas. Informational texts may include social studies words specific to the topic. And informational texts include visuals and text features. So when we were reading in our social studies, our last magazine, we did, in fact, hear about the Constitution, didn't we, boys and girls? So that's where we heard some information about the U.S. Constitution. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the genre, the title and genre of this text. What do you know about the U.S. Constitution? What might you learn? I want you to write that down. I want you to think about what you already know about the U.S. Constitution and what you think you might learn. What do you think, what do you already know? Somebody tell me something you already know about it. What do you already know? Sophia, what do you already know? That um, the U.S. Constitution is also... It's also what? It's the U.S. Constitution was founded in the 
celebrated at the Tuesday celebrated? No, we're celebrating the U.S. Constitution Day in Thanksgiving. We are a great Britain. Um, okay, what do you know? Allie. We, we know that the U.S. Constitution is important to the law. It's important to the law. Okay, what do you know? Um, I know that the U.S. Constitution has many rules that, no, that everybody has to follow. It has many rules everyone has to follow. Lauren? Thomas Jefferson wrote the first draft of the U.S. Constitution. That Thomas Jefferson wrote the first draft. Okay, write down what you know and what you want to learn, because you're going to learn a lot about it. boys and girls, we're going to meet these men, the author and illustrator who wrote it. So Norman Pearl has published many books for young people, often about social studies and science topics. The U.S. Constitution is part of the series of social studies books called American Symbols. His books present complex ideas in a way that is interesting and understandable. Matthew Skeens illustrated the U.S. Constitution and other books in the American Symbol series. When he is not drawn, he likes to be on the move, running or jumping. So the U.S. Constitution. My name is James Madison. I was the fourth president of the United States. I also played a big part in making a set of rules for the country. These rules are known as the Constitution. Let me tell you the story. What is the U.S. Constitution? The Constitution of the United States is the plan for how the government works. It says how much power the branches or parts of the government can have. It tells them how to make laws and how to make sure all Americans follow them. The Constitution is a symbol of democracy. The Constitution is the highest law in the United States. It is more important than any city or state law. The first rules of the United States. After winning the Revolutionary War in 1783, the United States was a new country. Like any country, it needed rules. Its first set of rules was called the Articles of Confederation. These rules joined together the 13 states. It was a start, but the country needed more. The United States needed a better form of government. So boys and girls, as I read, I think about the details and how they can change how I think about this election. When I read that the Constitution is a set of rules for the country, at first I'm thinking it means rules like the kind of, I'm familiar with, like a set of traffic rules. But then I read that the Constitution is a plan for how the government works. So I'm beginning to think that the Constitution covers more than just traffic rules. So that's, that's how you work when you're synthesizing, you're figuring things out as you're, as you're learning more information. Who wrote the Constitution? 
In May 1787, delegates from most of the 13 states met in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Their job was to write the Constitution, a new set of rules for the country's government. The meeting was called the Constitutional Convention. The 55 delegates at the meeting later became known as the framers of the Constitution. Rhode Island was the only state that did not send any delegates to the Constitutional Convention. Convention. A convention is a meeting of people who share the same purpose or ideas. Delegates. People who have been chosen to make decisions for a larger group are called delegates. Many different ideas. Writing the Constitution was not easy. Many people had different ideas about what it should say. Some men wanted a strong national government. Others did not. There was a lot of arguing. Finally, on September 17, 1787, the arguing stopped and the delegates signed the Constitution. Then the state had to agree to follow it. The last one did so in 1790. James Madison was a delegate from Virginia. He helped the other delegates at the Constitutional Convention work through their differences. Madison was both smart and fair. He is known today as the father of the Constitution. Okay, so boys and girls, as you're reading, you can be asking yourself some like important questions. So you can ask yourself like some big questions as you're reading, such as, what surprised me? Or what did the author think I already know? So as you're reading informational text, it can help you kind of analyze the text and more fully understand the most important ideas in the text. So think about what you read so far. So think about what you read so far and ask yourself a kind of a big question. What surprised you? Ask yourself, say, what surprised me the most about what you've read so far? What surprised you the most so far in what you read? Anything you found surprising? That good? That Rhode Island was the only state that did not, that did not send any delegates? Yeah, that's surprising, isn't it? That Rhode Island didn't, didn't send any delegates, so they didn't. Did they have any say in what was written in the Constitution? No, they didn't have any say. Anything else that was surprising to you? Yes? That James Madison is called, is called the father of the Constitution. That James Madison. Yes, because who were people thinking was, was really important to the Constitution? They were thinking somebody else was super important, weren't they? Who was the person everybody else was thinking was the most important person? Lauren? I don't know why this came up, but Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yeah, no, he was long after the time. He was quite a bit after the Constitution. Yes? I thought it was George Washington. Oh, yeah, no. Anybody surprised that they were arguing so much about it? Yes, yes, no. yes. Didn't you no. think, oh my, they'd all just agree about everything? No. Or they at least agree on a lot of the things? A lot of things, but they yeah. didn't. There was a lot of argument over things. They barely agreed on anything. Yeah, they barely agreed on anything. There was like a lot of arguing. How about it took several years before all the delegates signed the Constitution? It took years for them to sign it. Years. Because the, they, they started meeting in 1787. It wasn't all signed until 1790. That's a long time. That's so interesting. So many interesting questions that you'd be thinking about. Okay, so let's learn about the parts of the Constitution. The parts of the Constitution. The Constitution has three main parts, the preamble, the articles, and the amendments. One, preamble. The preamble is the beginning of the Constitution. 
The preamble tells Americans why they need a government and a constitution. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Domestic. When something is domestic, it is a part of or about the country in which you live. Welfare. If someone looks out for your welfare, that person makes sure you are healthy and happy. Posterity. If you think ahead to all the people who will be alive in the future, you are thinking about posterity. Okay, so why do you think the framers of the Constitution included the preamble? Why do you think they included the preamble? Any guesses? No? How would you synthesize the information about the preamble into what you already know? What do you think, Mikey? Preamble tells like why you need a government and a constitution. Yeah, it tells why they need why you need the why they need a government and why they need a constitution. Because at first you kind of think you don't, you think, why is the preamble even important, right? Yeah. You think, why does it need a preamble? Because it doesn't contain any of the rules, right? It doesn't contain any rules for the government at all. But then you read that the preamble tells why we need a government and a constitution. Now I think that we, I, at least I understand why the framers included the preamble. They probably wanted to explain their reason for writing the Constitution to begin with in order to form a more perfect union or a new country. So a union is the country in order to form a more perfect union. That's a very famous part of the preamble. The beginning of the preamble is very famous. A lot of people have that part memorized. Okay. We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. We want to be as perfect as we can. We try. We try so hard. Okay. Now let's read about the article. Two. Articles. The seven articles of the Constitution explain the branches of the U.S. government. They tell what those branches can and cannot do. In the United States, the people run the government. Americans have the right to vote. When they vote, Americans choose the people who will work for them in the government. The articles divide the U.S. government into three branches. Each branch has different powers. No one branch can become stronger than the others. This is called a balance of power. Every branch is equal. The articles allow people in government to keep all Americans safe. They say that the government can build an army and a navy to guard the country. of the government. So how many branches of government are there? Three. Three. Are they all equal or some more powerful than others? Is he? They're all powerful. They're all equally powerful. They have the same amount of power. The executive branch. This branch is made up of the president, the vice president, and the people who help them do their jobs. It is headquartered in the White House. The judicial branch. This branch is the court system. Judges see that laws are carried out in the right way. The judicial branch is headquartered in the Supreme Court, the highest court in the United States. The legislative branch. This branch is made up of the Congress, which is divided into two parts the House of Representatives, and the Senate. Congress makes the nation's laws. It is headquartered in the Capitol. So the three branches are 
legislative, or executive, judicial, and legislative. The one we hear the most about is probably which one? Which one do you hear about the most? Executive. Why do we hear about the executive branch the most? Um, because it's like, it's kind of like the White House. It's the White House. And who, who's in the White House? The president. The president. So we mostly hear about the executive branch. But they're all in the news because the judicial branch is the Supreme Court. And we'll hear about the Supreme Court. Particularly a lot lately because there have been a lot of new appointees. And then we do hear about the um, legislative branch because that's the Congress and the Senate. That would be legislators who make laws. Three, amendments. The amendments were not part of the original Constitution. They were added later. They give Americans many rights. For example, the amendments say that Americans cannot be made slaves. They can belong to any religion they want. All Americans age 18 and older can vote. Since it was signed in 1787, the Constitution has been amended or added to 27 times. The first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights. These are the most important rights Americans have. The Constitution and you. So, how does the Constitution work for you? The Constitution gives the U.S. government the power to make laws. Laws aren't just for adults. They're for kids, too. There are laws that allow kids to go to school. Others say what kinds of jobs kids can have and how many hours they can work. For more than 200 years, the Constitution has kept the U.S. government strong. I'm proud of our Constitution. Now that you know its story, I hope you are too. You can see the original Constitution at the National Archives Building in Washington, D.C. The Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence are there too. Oh, now, so boys and girls, so we can learn new facts when we're reading. And we can also think about things that we already know. Now, we read something that told us about laws about kids working. What did we read about? Where did we read that? I don't remember. Where did we read it? Back at social studies? Did we read it in social studies, Nina? Yeah, we read it in social studies, and the kids who were young worked like 24 hours a day. Well, not quite 24 hours a day, because you have to sleep. But yes, it was kids in factories, remember? Yes, we read it in our last, in our current magazine, right, Beckett? And then we read that they had to, they made laws. So, so six-year-olds weren't working in factories, and that is referenced here. So you can, you can, now you know that where is that law? Where is that law that prevents that? It's in the what? Sophia. The U.S. Constitution. It's in the U.S. Constitution. So boys and girls, so now you can add to your store of, of knowledge. Very good. Very, very good. How interesting. So what kinds of, yes, Beckett? I have a question. Yes. What's the most important part about the Constitution? I don't know what part you think is the most important part. Probably the Bill of Rights. What do you think? What is your opinion? What do you think is the most important part? Um, the articles, probably? The articles that um, explain the, the powers of the government, the different branches and the powers of the government. Everybody can have a different, a different opinion on what they think are the different parts. But they're all pretty much the same. Well, there's different, there's different things that are important about them. Right, like some, some don't have as much of this as others do, but then um, one can have a bunch more than, of that than others. Right, because we have the amendments. The amendments changed um, things in the Constitution. 
Constitution, those are important. The Bill of Rights that let us know what our rights are are very important because we want to protect our rights. So we are lucky that we have the rights that we have. So this is an odd, who found that this was a very interesting story, or interesting selection. It is an interesting selection. There is a lot of information in here for you to know. We will be discussing it further. We'll be using our fans, but we're not gonna use our fans today. So there was a lot of text and graphic features in this story. Were you noticing text and graphic features while you were reading? Yes? There's some in here you may not even know that they are in fact one of the text features. So we'll be discussing it another day. So good job, boys and girls. Good job. Okay. So well, we can close.